Hello, and welcome to Northampton Community College's Center for Career Development video series on career readiness skills. In this video, we'll be learning about communication, what it is, why it's important for career readiness, and what you can do to build your communication skills. First, let's take a moment and look at what career readiness skills are. Many soft skills have been retitled as career readiness skills. These are skills that are widely transferable and apply to all jobs regardless of the job type and include critical thinking, communication, digital technology, leadership, teamwork and collaboration, professionalism and work ethic, career management, and global awareness. Today, let's look more closely at communication and see how it applies to career readiness. As I'm sure you know, communication comes in a variety of forms, such as spoken or verbal, which includes face-to-face, -face, telephone, radio, television, and other media. Nonverbal communication, including body language, facial expressions, how we dress or act, where or how we stand, and our hygiene. Written communication, which includes letters, emails, social media, books, magazines, the internet, and other media. In this presentation, we'll learn about workplace communication and the most common forms of communication used, including the use and etiquette of email, the written word and forms of technical writing, speaking and presenting, the use of telephone, the need for active listening, interpersonal and hierarchical communication with coworkers, supervisors, subordinates, and clients, Email and etiquette. When writing emails, it is important to understand and follow rules of etiquette and structure. Here, we can see the basic structure of an email, and we want to pay attention to a number of pieces. First, always make sure you have the accurate email address. Second, if you need to use CC or carbon copy when you want to include others on your email, BCC or blind carbon copy when you want others to receive email but not see anyone else's email address. It's always important to have a clear and direct subject line. Always use a greeting such as hello, good morning, good afternoon, etc. In the body of your email, write clearly and concisely when sharing your information. When closing an email, end with a sign-off, such as thank you, thanks, best regards, or sincerely. And always provide your name and contact information when you complete your email. Email etiquette and written words. When writing emails, memos, and other documents that require your use of words, keep in mind. Read your email before you send it for clarity, grammar, and spelling. Remember that uppercase is seen as shouting. If sending lots of information, use bullet points to space out your message for easier reading. Always try to respond to emails promptly. Avoid using slang such as yeah, ain't, or lol. When replying to an email with multiple recipients, respond only to the sender unless all others need to hear from you. Don't forward chain mails, chain emails, even if it promises bad luck if you don't. I promise you will be fine. Technical writing. Another common form of communication is technical writing. There are many roles you may hold that will require you to write in specific styles, which may include creating a meeting agenda, preparing budgets, coordinating work schedules, or drawing up contracts. Speaking and presenting. Speaking can take many forms in the workplace, and there will be times where you'll be asked to speak amongst your peers to present information in a meeting, provide updates, or deliver remarks. Improve your public speaking skills by knowing what you are talking about. Research your topic and learn more about it in depth. Practice your presentation. Run through it a few times to make sure you're ready. Consider your audience. How are they going to receive your information? in person, over teleconference, in a meeting hall. Adapt your presentation style to your audience. Find opportunities to improve your speaking skills and 
comfort speaking in front of groups, such as online training. Public speaking is an art form and can be improved. Some of the best speakers in history needed to practice and learn. Telephone etiquette is very important in the workplace. Your phone manners communicate a lot of information. Be sure that what others hear on the other side is what you want them to hear. Some basic phone etiquette includes greeting and introduction. In the workplace, you will get calls from coworkers, bosses, and clients. Answer with hello, this is, and use your name to avoid confusion and maintain etiquette. Speak clearly and not too quickly. The person on the other end will appreciate you speaking clearly and slowly enough to understand what you're saying. Smile. Did you know that it's possible to hear a smile? Smiling can change the tone of your voice and make you sound more pleasant. Say goodbye. This lets the other person know that this communication event has concluded. Avoid using slang like peace or later in a professional setting. Nonverbal communication. In the workplace, we want to be sure that we are managing our professional image and have good nonverbal communication skills. Be sure to dress appropriately for the job or occasion. Watch your tone of voice when speaking and be mindful of your facial expressions. Practice good hygiene and wear clean clothes. Be mindful of the use of touch and maintain an appropriate distance to others. Be on time for meetings and appointments. Pay attention to your nonverbals and ask yourself, what am I communicating when I am not speaking? Active listening. Active listening is the process of paying close attention to the words and messages of coworkers and supervisors and seeking clarification to improve your understanding. It includes attending closely to and concentrating on the messages of others while they communicate. Asking questions for clarity and understanding, such as, what did you mean when you said, or can you help me understand? Be sure to not interrupt others while they are speaking. Use your nonverbals to show you are engaged. Maintain eye contact, nod, smile when appropriate. Avoid distractions, such as looking at your phone, fidgeting, or tuning out. Active listening reduces misunderstandings, builds relationships, and increases your ability to get the job done. Communication with coworkers, supervisors, subordinates, and clients. When speaking with others in the workplace, consider their role in relation to your own and adjust your communication style to appropriate levels of formality. When in doubt, politeness is always appropriate. Avoid becoming too casual with coworkers and maintain a professional image by not cursing, telling rude jokes, or sharing sensitive details about your life. Respect the role. Supervisors and bosses hold a certain distinction. When you communicate with them, keep in mind that they hold positions of authority. Be helpful and outgoing for customers. It reflects well on your company and you. We hope you've enjoyed this lesson on communication skills, and we look forward to bringing you more videos on these very useful career readiness skills. For more helpful resources in career exploration, job searching, internship opportunities, and more, visit us online at northampton.edu forward slash student dash services dash career dash services dot htm. Thank you.